And I can confirm that as we speak, there's definitely not a, a double header or any fixture of Mamalodi Sundowns um, confirmed for the FMB Stadium um, in, on Saturday or in the upcoming week. Uh, but it's an exciting one because one of the things we're going to be doing is and I, cast your mind back to two, three weeks ago when we had a full conversation here trying to assist all the parents out there who say, where do I take my kids, Andy? What must happen to my kids when they're so talented but they go to trials? And you remember the, 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 the very sad case of um, a young boy who passed on during a session and trials. You remember that, right? He's going to be honored this Saturday, by the way. Um, so we're going, to, we're going to tell you about that. And then we told you the sad story of what's happened at the School of Excellence as well, where thousands of kids showed up. Thousands of kids showing up for an eight-hour trial where they're both getting, or well, they're all getting about five minutes to try and make an impression to eight coaches. It was a dire situation. So today, I think this is one of the best solutions in South Africa at the moment. So please keep listening. At exactly half past, we're going to be speaking about the best way to give your child the best leg up if you think there's talent there. If you want to just try, even, you know, get them playing, we've got that for you. But also, there's a big story that's been going around on social media about uh, a double header at the FNB Stadium this coming weekend with Kaiser Chiefs uh, playing Swallows and uh, Sundowns playing Tipi Mazembe. Uh, it's said that they're both going to be at uh, FNB Stadium and it's going to be a doubleheader. We'll dispel that myth as well. We'll speak to stadium management out uh, at uh, FNB Stadium and uh, we'll give you a heads up on that. But the big one here, do you remember Luke Emile? Luke Emile is uh, a former Free State Stars coach. But look, when a city as well, he was there. Um, and he's moved up. Black Leopards as well in South Africa is one of the teams that he's coached. AS Vita Club, he managed them as well. Uh, lately, if you want him, you'll find him at a team called Eagles out uh, in our uh, FC Eagles RDC is what the team is called. Why are we calling and speaking to Luke Amaral? Because Luke thinks he's the solution to one of South African football's biggest team headaches. He's coming up in a few. Welcome to it. It's uh, Sports Star Amplified with Andy and the Mighty Metro FM. Six or seven every single day. Uh, we've got Coach on the line. And many of you might remember him. He hasn't been in South Africa since 2019 uh, with the Black Leopards as coach Luke Emile. Before that, he was at Free State Stars. Um, he was also out at Bulukwana City. Now joining us on the line. And nowadays, he's uh, out in the Congo, I understand. Coach Luke, thank you so much for joining us and welcome. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, nice to, to hear you again. <laughs> Coach, it's been a while since South Africans have heard from you. 2019 when you left South Africa after Black Lippers, if memory serves me right. Yes, yes, uh, but I'm still following the league. I've always been contacting uh, people, uh, friends who were working in the league. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm still following your, your, your championship. And uh, I know everything on that side. And... Uh, yeah, uh, you know, I, I, I'm still in touch with several players that I had the, the chance to to coach and and things like that. So I'm also following uh, the, the, the CAF Confederation Cup and the Champions League of Africa and all these things. So for me, it's very important and it was very important to be always aware about everything and for example, uh, the good things that are doing sundowns in, in Champions League and and things like that. <clears throat> Coach, uh, since you've left South Africa, I mean, you, you, you've traveled around. You've been to Tanzania, I think Tunisia as well. You're currently in Congo, I understand? Yes, I've been in Tanzania when I, uh, when I left. Uh, first of all, when I left three states, I've been in Egypt. Uh, they wanted to renew my contract. I didn't renew it uh, uh, because of uh, they didn't want to to renew my assistant so I made a mistake because uh, this assistant after that has not been very uh, uh, faithful if I can say like that and then uh, I've been back in in uh, South Africa with Black Lopez and I've been in Tanzania with all the politics that happened there you know after the last game unfortunately uh, they tried to tarnish my name and destroy my name but uh, you know that these teams like, for example, Al-Ali of Pizzo in Saudi Arabia has been punished. Uh, 
uh, to pay a certain amount, a uh, high amount of USD. I don't know any team who will be punished without going to, to CAS and accept this punition if they are right in the boots. So it, it means that they were not, not right in the boots. And yes, you know, uh, people were thinking I was, I was suspended or I was... Uh, I don't know what I could not uh, continue to to coach, but it was not the case because I've not never been suspended by FIFA, never been suspended by CAF. I just cleared my name in South Africa before the end of the judgment because you know South Africa uh, wanted to. So you can hear me, yeah. South Africa okay, wanted yeah. to 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 um, to. Uh, I don't know, associate their name to the Tanzanian Federation. Uh, that has not been uh, right of this case. And um, uh, yeah, after that, I've been in Tunisia. After that, I've been in Tunisia and in Libya. Then Tunisia, I didn't stay because uh, I, I, I went there for the league who was, uh, for the team, uh, Star Tunisia, who had to be in the first league, Premier League. Unfortunately, uh, in matter of administra administrations, they have been relegated before the start of the league. The start of the league in second league, so I could not uh, ex uh, be coached there in second league. Mm. And then I've been in Libya, yeah, where it was a bit dangerous in, because on was I was on the bad side. Uh, you know, in Libya, you have uh, Tripoli and Benghazi, and you can see that all the games, the CAF games, are played in Benghazi, where it's more calm than Tripoli. I cannot say it's a war in Tripoli. It's uh, just uh, a lot of gangs who, are, who want to, to, to gain uh, space in the city mm. and all these things, but it is very dangerous sometimes, you know. Coach, and I'm going to go back to the Tanzania thing in a little bit, uh, because you brought it up, but uh, let's put it aside just for now. I'll get back to it. From what I'm understanding, hearing and reading, you are interested in coming back to South Africa. Have you had any conversations past? Because I remember the last conversation you were having, I think, was with Chipper, when Chipper United said they'd wanted you there, but because of all those matters, you couldn't come here. Have you had any other conversations with uh, teams in South Africa? Yeah, sure. You know, I think you, you read the stories. Some stories were wrong. Some stories were true. I had two Zoom meetings in June with Amazulu. I was close to signing Amazulu. Uh, we, we sent our contract to Amazulu. The chairman was okay. He wanted a full team. I wanted to bring uh, also my fitness coach, uh, my South African fitness coach, who is Rido Berlin who has been a fitness coach of Banyana Banyana, you know him, and he was at Free States, and he has been with Sundowns uh, during uh, some years. Uh, you know, but uh, finally, uh, he said that he will sign the contract. Everything was right after two Zoom meetings of one hour and ten minutes. But unfortunately, eight days after that, he changed his mind. I don't know why, but it's like that. And he, probably, he appointed uh, Pablo Martin. After that, I've been in touch, very small touch with, uh, Ray, uh, not Ray, I am with Richard Bay. Uh, but um, how can I say that the chairman uh, didn't respond despite he asked people to call me and, and all these things. Then finally, he said, uh, I cannot appoint you. <laughs> Uh, in matter of finance, then uh, recently in December, I've been approached by two teams, uh, one where I work already in South Africa and the other one was Shippa United, that you say the name. So, but we couldn't find an agreement, financial agreement. And it was not a question that I was too expensive because it's not this matter. But, uh, you know, uh, some people in South Africa also, they don't understand that the rent now, unfortunately, is uh, very low. The value of the rent is, is low now, really. Uh, if I give you an example, uh, 1,000 rent my time in, in Polokwane City, it was 60, 67, 70 euro. In Free State Sun, it was 65 euro for 1,000 rent. Now, 1,000 rent is 49 euro. So, for perhaps South African people, it doesn't change anything, but for uh, foreign people, it changed a lot of things. But uh, okay, uh, then uh, we didn't find agreement. Despite um, uh, I, sh I, I, I sh ask me to 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 send my pay slip of free set. Uh, I sent them an example. Then I also sent uh, 
the chairman of Chipa, uh, because he contacted me again on 31 December and 1st January. He, he, I sent him his proposal, his offer <laughs> from uh, two years ago. Then he said to me, no, I cannot... Uh, uh, pay you what I offered you at that time. I said, okay, no problem. Thank you. I was in touch at that time with uh, Club Africa. I mean, so hold on, Chris. He wanted to pay you. He wanted mm-hmm. to pay you less than what he offered you two years ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And he didn't want to give me bonuses, so because he said that I was paid to to win uh, to win games. We you know that we are paid to win games, you know. But when you give you an offer two years ago. And you want to pay me less than two years ago? I say no, we cannot. And I have to add to that that the value of the rent because it's very important for foreigners. You know, it's very important. And you know, we were not. not I make a big effort, really big effort to come back. But it, yeah, it was not. Uh, we didn't agree. So yeah, you know. And with Amazon, like the coach, that. you say yeah, you spoke. And then, and spoke. then I had this offer here, and it, it, it went very, very fast. Yes. You spoke to Amazulu, you and the chair. You had uh, two different meetings with them. Everything wasn't agreed upon. Yeah. You sent them your contract, and then last minute they said no. They went with Pablo. Did they say why it is that they didn't want to give you the job? No, no, no. We never know. The agent asked them why. They never responded. I don't know. You know, uh, you know, uh, you can find a lot of excuses. At the end of the day, you have to find a solution, not excuses. You know. So, for me, for me, they said yes. One of the sponsor preferred Pablo, but why did you ask me to send the contract and a contract of my full stuff? So, and you had already you had already no, agreed on yeah, the fee here. Yeah. Had, had they already said Everything your fee was fine? Everything was okay. Everything was okay. Everything was okay. Also for the staff, I should have taken with me Rido Berdin, who is South African uh, fitness coach. I should have taken a, a, a goalkeeper coach who was Murat Sanmi, who worked with me at Free States, who is now with me here in DRC. You know, uh, I should have uh, found again Pilelam, uh, who was my video analyst at Free States, and I should have found again, uh, meet again. Uh, if you can just hold that thought for me, coach, just hold that thought for me, please. Hold that thought. It's exactly 23 after the hour six. In a few, we'll be joined by PMSS uh, director as well as PMSS head of youth development. I've said this, this so many times that there's no question we get asked on this show as often as, where do I take my kids? They're really talented. This is one of the solutions that I'm willing to put my my name behind because I've seen uh, the mastermind behind it and I've seen what they've been able to do. That's coming up just at a half past, so do stay on tuned for that. But right now, I've got Luke Emile, a former Free State Stars Black Leopards coach here in South Africa, uh, speaking about the, the different offers that he's had here in South Africa, a deal that didn't work out with Amazulu, a deal that didn't work out with Richards Bay, as well as Chipper United. But coach... From what I'm reading and hearing and putting my ear out there, there's a bigger fish in South Africa that you're going after. I don't know. You know, I got a call yesterday and uh, again today, uh, you know, people are asking me about Kezo Chief, but you have to know that um, uh, also the agent after the deal fell in Amazulu and after uh, the coach of Kezo Chief uh, uh, was on thin ice, if we can say like that, before he was fired or relegated. I don't know what, what can I say. I don't know if he's still in the club or not. When before they appointed Kevin Johnson as a head coach of development, yeah, the agents spoke with Kezo Chief, and unfortunately, it seems that Mr. Kezo Junior uh, responded uh, on a special way to to my agent. Then I wrote him on uh, an email, a personal email, but he said to me that he never spoke with his agent. So, you know, I don't know in this case uh, on which foot I have to dance, but, uh, you know, um, at the end of the day, it's uh, happening that is important or what is not happening. So, you know, me, I'm not into politics. I'm only a, a, a soccer coach, a professional soccer coach that is trying to do his job as well as he can, you know, so... So, it's coach, like that, so, so Kaiser Junior reached out to your agent. They had a conversation, and then you sent them an email, and they said they never did. What is the special way that Kaiser responded to what you know to be? I, I don't. 
I don't want. I don't want. I don't want to say that. I don't want to to respond because um, I don't want to to say uh, these things at the radio or things like that. If I have the but, chance, but to you know for him, sure uh, that eyes to eyes, eyes, to eyes uh, I will tell him. Uh, now you see. Now you see. But you they see did reach I'm out to you. Now you see. Mm. But Kazakhstan did, did want your services. I don't say that. I said that my agent talked with them. Then he responded, uh, my agent, a special way. Then my agent forward me the, the, the response. Then I say, hey, what is that again? And then I sent uh, Kaiser Junior myself an email. And he responded to me that he never said that. Uh, so uh, at the end of the day, they appointed uh Kevin Johnson, like character coach, until the end of the season, and uh, yes, unfortunately now for them, uh, it will be again a, 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 a blank, a white season because they will not win any trophy. I don't think they, they are able to win the league this season because the Sundowns is really on the top of every team in the PSL, and um, yeah, it's like that they have been eliminated in. Uh, and bank up by a team of, if I can say third league, I don't know the exact name in, yeah. in your yeah. in the country. But for me, you know, PSL is first league. Then you have second league. Then you have the third league. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I just don't want you to get misquoted and I don't want people to have a misunderstanding of what you're saying and misconstrue your words, coach. And that's why I'm just trying to get clarity. There was a conversation between yourselves and Kaiser Chiefs through your manager and through yourself about a possible coaching job. Am I correct in saying that? Uh, me, I, I didn't speak about, about, about with Kezo Jr. only by email, you know, only by email. My agent spoke with him, yes. About a coaching and job. My agent placed, uh, uh, and my agent placed, placed a player there, so I would, don't want to reveal the name of the player, but the player is there. So, you know, so... It, I cannot say that my my agent is lying because he he, he placed a player there with a regular player in the team. So you know, <laughs> but at the end of the day, you have to take the lessons of that and see what people are thinking or they are not thinking. You know, but I don't want to reveal uh, really the this conversation or, or this message. You know, is this because you still so have hope? For, uh, maybe with... sometimes. Uh, are you? Is, I'm saying, is this because you still? I'm, I'm asking, Coach, if, is this because you still have hope of uh, pers- possibly, you know, resurrecting conversations with Kaiser Chiefs? No, because I'm a respectful person, and I don't want to to betray anybody or to speak bad on anybody if I don't have the person uh, uh, in front of me. You know, uh, you know how it is in South Africa when people are saying the things. Uh, Straight. Once they are speaking in their mind, uh, people are destroying them or trying to 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 destroy them, not to destroy, to, to criticize them. The same case with uh, my colleague Hugo Bros. Uh, you know how many uh, criticism he got uh, before, and uh, he got the, the the bronze medal at uh, the Afcon. You know, and everybody was criticizing him because he's speaking his mind, but he's saying most of the time nine nine times on ten very correct things. And but, I, I, uh, I know you. Most of the people in South Africa they don't like that. You know. I know you to speak so, your mind as well, and that's why I'm asking: Is there still any hope, any conversations? of Luke M.I.L. going to Kaiser Chiefs? I don't know. Now I'm employed here. I have to respect that since I'm employed here. The day I was employed here, so I'm here since one month, eh? because you didn't know, but I'm here since one month. The day I was employed here, because like I said to you, I was in, in contact with two big teams, names of the team. You know, I've been in contact with... Uh, with, like I said, Club Africano, who is in uh, Confederation Cup. I've been in touch with Etoile Lucel, who is in Champions League. Before that, you have also to know, I have to reveal you something uh, before that, before uh, December, before people from South Africa call me again. I've been in discussion, with, in touch with Simba from Tanzania, with Singida Fountain Gate from Tanzania. So do you understand what it means? That, that people really 
realize that it was nothing you know it was nothing wrong but i don't didn't want to reveal that but it is the true and you know it's like that but you know what happened to mr middendorp in singida von again a gate pardon and yes we've seen by as my lawyer advised me until the case of the case was closed with young guy you know but she didn't pay me everything but now since that time they pay me uh, the balance of what they owe me you know but uh, he, he, he just, recommended me not to go back until this this balance was not paid yeah just a last one on this and i, I just want to get a, a sense i understand that you're currently employed and you're happy where you are but is there a door that's still open for a conversation with you and Kaza Chiefs? If there were, is this something you're interested in? You cannot say no, you know, because in life you never, you never know anything. The people who say, I know everything, it's not true. Nobody has the exact sense, but you know, I always uh, appreciate uh, South Africa, you know. Uh, DRC, I, I always said South Africa is my second country, despite I'm from Belgium, because I was so happy in South Africa. My wife was so happy in South Africa, you know. And um, yes, I had, uh, like we, if I, if you understand what I will say, mm. a return of flame, <laughs> if I can say like that. I don't know if you understand because certainly not the, the good words, but uh, you know. I had a bit shocked with the reaction of some people. And and then, uh, you know, DRC also is the first country where I've been. I was in Vita Club in 2010. It's uh, DRC who, that um, you... uh, offered me a professional job the first yeah. time in first league because in Belgium I only coached in second league, you know. It was 100%. professional, but semi professional. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Coach, lastly, um, you've been keeping tabs and watching the South African League. You've seen the Chiefs. Uh, play, you've seen their squad. What do you make of the team? Oh, Chief, I said that so many times. Chief has a very good squad this season. Certainly, she, she, she could have adjusted one or two players at, uh, at the transfer window, but they have a very good squad, uh, really a better squad than uh, one or two years ago. And uh, they have very good material. You know, for example, Pude Modi and uh, Pozzane, that I managed in, in, in Free State, I recommended them to, when I was in discussion with Amazulu, and then they signed a, a, their a chief. It's only, not only that, you know, they're fantastic midfielders. They have, <clears throat> a correct defense, you know. I, I know all these players, most of these players, you know, I, I know most of the players in, in different teams in South Africa because I had the chance to, to manage uh, several of these players in different different teams, uh, also in the national team. There was Mudo, was Nico Mobi, and all these guys, you know. So, yeah. Um, we can never say no, but the, it's not me to do the first step. Like I say, I have to respect my employer now and uh, will give me the chance to come back. I, I had offers before, but um, unfortunately for me and my family, 2023 was a very bad year uh, because we lost some very important uh, uh, persons in my family who passed away. Totally hard so, to hear. yeah, for the rest... Um, I had to, to, to solve all these issues and the offers I got. I'm not talking about Amazulu. I'm not talking about uh, some other offers, but, but most of the offers I received from Rwanda, from Kenya, from Cameroon, from Uganda, uh, from Tanzania were not, you know, uh, uh, I don't say acceptable because not to be, be the good word, but I will mm-hmm. always be open for a return in South Africa. But wow. for now, I have to respect my team. I have to respect my employer. Uh, I, I think we have a very good chairman. Uh, his mother is from Belgium. Him is from Congo. Uh, you know, he is an ambitious person, but he's sure that uh, the soccer in DRC is not the same soccer than in South Africa. The means are different, but the, the man is a very good man, a very straight person uh, and a very uh, honest person. So I have to respect him, and uh, yes, I completely uh, understand, like I Coach. And I won't push anymore. Other, I co- yeah. Uh, uh, other people, I will tell you the name of a team. For example, in Nigeria, they contacted me, and they offered me the double of what I was earning here. I say no. I'm sorry. I'm here since. Oh no! The line just went bad. 
Well, just in time, uh, we do have to go nonetheless. But thank you so much to Luke Emile there for speaking to us. Um, yeah. What do you make of that? Uh, th- th- there was a lot there. You know, we only had a 30-minute window. Couldn't get in everything I wanted because the coach does uh, go on. Uh, but perhaps, Timmy, when we do have more time because the coach needs more time. But what do you make of that? Let's take a break. When we come back, it's a cause worth listening to. For our conversation with Luke ML, send your WhatsApps to 60 Right now, though, uh, PMSS has become synonymous with uh, young talent. Um, you remember when it was uh, first uh, brought up to many of us with the, uh, the the title "Create the Player of Tomorrow." Peter Musimane Schools uh, is what it's most famously known as. And once you say Peter Musimane, firstly, that is the one thing when it comes to football, a brand that is synonymous with excellence. That a lot of people are going to be like, "Oh, yay! This is something we can do." I haven't been able to give a lot of details to those that have been asking about it, but this comes on the back of conversations we've had here about. Um, young people trying to break into some sort of I don't want to say school necessarily but some sort of club environment some sort of organized environment mm-hmm. in order for us to be able to you know to, to give them an opportunity and to give them a leg up uh, Moira uh, as well as Justin Collett uh, who is the PMSS Head of Youth Development mm-hmm. joins me he's wearing the shortest shorts I've ever seen <laughs> <laughs> the last time I saw shorts this short was in 1996 <laughs> Dr. Kumano <laughs> You straight from the field then? Yes. That, that it is, sir. Yeah. My apologies. <laughs> no, please. We expect you to look like this. In fact, everyone should come dressed like this. Moira, always great to have you. Thank you so much and good afternoon to the listeners. This is the first time we're talking about it here, so we might, we, we might even uh, back it up a little bit. Mm. There's definitely a need for what you guys are doing. Yep. There's a lot of mothers in their cars right now who don't want to leave because they want to hear this, and I'm glad that you're here. What is the offering of PMSS? Uh, you know, just quickly, PMSS really is sort of it's a brainchild of Coach Pizzo. Mm. Um And what we what he said was that obviously we know that from an at an international level we're not performing as as we want to do as South Africans. And so he said, you know, instead of all of us always criticizing, he wants to leave a legacy hmm. uh, of creating a player of tomorrow. Actually, that was his, his line. He hmm. said it without really understanding. And I thought, wow, that is actually the tagline we must use for this. And he kept on saying the player that is socially uh, uh, balanced from a, and also from an education point of view and from a technical and a tactical point of view. So what we then did was we did a research quickly to see the best athletes in the world. Why, uh, how do they get it right? Mm. Um, so we did, and we thought we shouldn't only look at soccer, we looked at the Williams sisters, we looked at Tiger Woods, we looked at our own rugby team, we looked at the All Blacks, we looked at obviously Ajax Amsterdam and um, Ajax, Ajax, Ajax Club and um, uh, Barcelona. And the 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 the, the some con- the the conclusion of that research said that we've got to start with the child from a very young age, mm. teaching them technique, and that is why we started the Pizzo Musimane Soccer School. It's not that it's an education school; it's a school for soccer, and we there we focus our children more on technique, mastering the ball. And we want to, f- we, we, we also, our main focus, we know we've got lots of interest we will have in certain areas under 15s, but our main focus is an under seven because our mandate from Coach Peter seven. is under seven. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, because in, in schools that we are at, we've got preschool, uh, grade R children. So Coach Peter's mandate is, I want to, in the next 12 years, when the child is 18, to have 80% of Banyana Banyana and Bafana Bafana. From so this is for both uh, girls and boys? Uh, absolutely, yes. That is absolutely amazing. I've got four, so already mm, we're yes. getting close. Can we sign them up? <laughs> <laughs> we're we, we, we almost there. You need to convince me a little bit more. But All right, let's you, do it. You, you're out there. You, you spend time with these kids. Yeah. You know, I've got somebody who's listening now who's going to say, hmm, at seven years old, you know, I just want my child to just go and play. How important is it that mm. at seven years old they start getting a bird with them? Listen, we've got a tagline of, uh, as far as those seven years old is concerned. It's the uh, game is within the child. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so we want to provide them with that free opportunity to, for them to express themselves. But at the same time, you ask why sevens. It's, if we get the older age groups, they've already developed the bad habits. 
So what we want to do is get them young enough to where we can create good habits because <laughs> it's a lot easier to do that than actually to break bad habits that they've established. We're already standing on top of the ball. Mm-hmm. We're already, mm-hmm. you know, back healing every ball exactly. that comes to us. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and, and also too, everybody's going to tell you we're all about individual player development because it sounds good. Mm-hmm. The difference is what we're going to do is actually implement it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a ball mastery program. It's a 2,000 touches um, program that we implement across the board to all the boys and girls to where literally the first 10 10, 15, 20 minutes of every training session, every kid will touch that ball literally 2,000 times. It's a ratio of one player to one ball. So we l- really l- ask them to focus on themselves and to work on making themselves better. Mm. And ultimately, if we get that right, you know, the team success will, will follow. So more then I'm listening to this and I'm saying I'm sold. I, I want a home for my child to start Project Mbappe. You know, as, as the internet <laughs> is like calling it. Yeah, yeah. Can, can we use that? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Everybody's like, yeah, I, I've got the next genius here. Yeah. What is the process of Peter Musimane soccer schools? How do I get involved? Where do I catch you? How do I even bring my child to you? So when we started, so after the research, we said, okay, then we need to deal with children. Where are the children? They are in schools. Mm. Schools, we've got public schools and private schools. And we we did research. We've had meetings, obviously, with both both uh, uh, groups. And we, we then felt that for us to start this process, we will go to... Curo, we had discussions then, but Curo, the Meridian and the Academy, which are schools we find in Cosmo City, so we're to Mamelodi, Soshanguve. So that's where we have the, the soccer schools. It's a different program from what we have with Pizzo Musimani independent schools, mm. right? The independent schools, we've got them in, um, in, North Northcliff, in Boxback, Midrand, and. This North. is when you've partnered up with the school. No, these ones are independent. Yeah, the, the independent school, schools. Yeah, the independent school, any child can come. Oh, wow. From anywhere. As long as it is, you know, if you want to come, like now we're doing trials, Justin will talk about it in North, North Riding. Any child can come. The, the, the Curo program, we do mass participation, we do the physical education. We also help them with the their teams, training okay. their teams. But with the Pizzo Musima and soccer schools, the independent ones, this is where we've got the four... Four schools to say them again, to, just just for those that are listening in, so they can see where the nearest one is. Where are the four? The one is in Boxback, Midrand, North Riding, and then we are opening in Mamelodi. We're excited. And all of this information is available where? Mara? On, it's available on our website uh, www.bitsomosimanesokoschools.co.za. Tell me a little bit about Mamelodi. When is that? Mm-hmm. We start uh, start trials uh, Saturday 9th of March. Saturday, 9th of March. Yes. Trials in Mamelodi. Where have you gone yet? Have you gone anywhere? As far as trials, we're yeah. presently at North Riding. Then mm-hmm. we're at, uh, next week, we're in Midrand. Mm-hmm. And then the following week, we're doing trials in Boxburg. I just want to avoid a lot of, because, I mean, we saw just this week, um, I think it was Mamelodi Sundowns who were targeted to say they were having trials and people were asked to mm-hmm. pay certain amounts of money mm. um, to, to, to get taken into those trials. And mm. people get taken like that a lot. Mm. People get taken Definitely. where people ask for money to say, no, mm. there's trials here and there. Let's avoid that with this. Mm. What is the line of communication so that I know as a parent that, no, 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 I was listening on the radio. If it goes this way, if you're saying this, then it's not true. As far as financial, um, the, the financials of it from a parent point of view, what do I need to have? How do I know that this is, 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 is the right people that I'm talking to? What are the protocols to observe from my point of view as a parent when I'm trying to get my kids to make sure that it's with you guys? Uh, and I think it's always better to go to our website, uh, za, and also on the social media. Mm. You will see we put all our flyers there, all the information that we want to share. And the trials are all free. I think that's the most important thing. They are all Correct. free, yeah. There's no such thing as paying mm. to be associated with the Pizza Musimane Soccer mm. Schools in any way for a trial. Yes. Absolutely. It is all free. Yes. You send your child and if it's identified, but to go there and to trial is all free. Is there some sort of registration though to make sure or do people just pitch up? We are doing registrations. We do encourage that they go to the website and register. However, we understand that some people might not have that opportunity. Mm-hmm. So we are open to people coming on the day. 
preference is to register. Okay. However, th- we will not retain a person, a, a child because they have not registered. Bert, give us a little bit more detail from your point of view and your end. You're the one that deals with these kids every mm-hmm. single day. You're the one that is the face of it yeah. when they arrive. Well, I'd like to talk about the CURE program because th- that is really a, our um, jewel in the crown, so to speak. We, we're literally working with the boys and girls year-round. And we're working on in a physical education environment. So we work with every child for two hours every single week. Not only that, we work with their football program after school and once again year round. And I emphasize the year round because Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the traditional school soccer environment. It's a season. And and that season might be as short as 30 days. So, you know, the fact that we're going to have these kids under our guidance for an entire year. I'm really looking forward to seeing what things look like in a couple of years. Mm. Which 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 curators is it? Is it all curators? We're presently in twelve, uh, so ten of them in mm. Gauteng, and then we're one uh, in Pol- Polokwane and another in Mahikang. Mm. So, if I'm curious to know, I can just uh, is this available on your website as well to say these curators for those that want to take their child to these preferential schools because they want them to get ahead in football as well. And and kudos kudos to Kuro. They've they've been bold enough to say they want to become a soccer school. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So they deserve a lot of credit for that. Sorry, Mark. Absolutely. So when we started, obviously, uh, and and we were talking with them, we also used the notion of the 10,000 hours uh, because Mm. we know. Malcolm Gladwell. Yes, because we know that um, a lot of schools have different sports. But we particularly went to these Kuros, the Meridian and the Academy, because we know it's more in our township. And basically, our African children love soccer. So, and the agreement was that whatever happens, they can do swimming, extra mural, but we want the soccer to be the whole year. Yeah, I mean, I remember when I was in school, it was literally, uh, like Mm -hmm. you say, it was a month, it was a season. Exactly. And then at the end of that, you'd have to wait for next year again. Mm -hmm. From Mm -hmm. a coaching perspective, it's like Christmas every day. (laughs) It is, it is. So, we had um, teachers. I remember it was my math teacher, I think, who was teaching us, uh, who was our coach at the time. So, the difference here now is you have people who are educated in football. Mm -hmm. It's not a a teacher who after school then takes us for soccer. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, listen, all of our coaches are are, are qualified uh, Mm -hmm. at a SAFA level. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in addition to that, you know, we do the normal things. Well, they should be normal, but police Mm -hmm. clearance, Mm -hmm. uh, first aid. Mm -hmm. And then we even uh, have them attend a Wamaka uh, course, which is women and men against child abuse. Mm -hmm. Then who do they play against? Because if, Soccer at schools is seasonal. At, in that season, they're playing against other schools. Yeah. So at a time that you guys carry on, um, who, it, who's the competition? And, and Lily, it's a very good question because some of the arguments around the world is that we play too much and don't train enough. Hmm. So what this does is allow us to actually to focus on training. But we're also going to get creative and, and establish tournaments of our own mm. and, and festivals too. So they will still get those game time opportunities, mm. but ultimately the focus is going to be largely on, on their training and development. 086-0002160-060-552-7303 for the WhatsApp line. Let's take a break. Peter Musimane, soccer schools. Uh, I do have Asmoya as well as Justin in the studio here. Um, we talk, I called you Bert earlier. I didn't hear it, so you're fine. I called I did, right? <laughs> no. Yeah, no, I did. Um, uh, Lele, I heard it there. Because we're supposed to speak to Bert. We're going to be speaking to Bert in just a few about uh, this weekend. Okay. As uh, I've been called worse. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, oh, oh, this is not just it here. Because as you're saying, you, you want football all year round. You want participation. That's where the PMFC, which I'm understanding is a bit of football clubs now come in as well. Mm-hmm. Yes. What's that? So if you look at a developmental pyramid... You know, you've got your soccer schools at the bottom, which is exposure to all kids. And then we start from there in an identification process and we move them up the ladder, so to speak. And that's where we find our our Pizza Mosamani football club. So the next step up from that would obviously be your provincial and then obviously national and then hopefully professional. So that's the pyramid that we're looking at from every single one of our boys and girls that join the program from the young age. Hopefully one day they'll even come back and coach in our program. So the independent sites that you're speaking about then become clubs? Correct. And they play where? With then we'd be participating in the local football associations. So we'd be competing against all of our other community clubs in the areas. That's actually quite exciting for me because then uh, you, you're playing in the local leagues with your peers um, who've also been identified through some source or another. It's not just you at school playing for the school team, but that Correct. school and that team then becomes a club yeah. in and outside of that. 
Yes, obviously there's that school pride, so you get to play with your your classmates and your yeah. peers. And then once you go into a community environment, you tend to recruit the better players from a various number of schools. Mm. So those teams tend to be a little bit stronger, a little bit more competitive. And again, we're just sort of starting to identify that talent moving up. It's named after Pito. He's going to be the big draw card as to why anybody, you know, becomes a part of it. I mean, it's the Pito Musima and the soccer schools mm. football club. How involved is he? Um, Coach Pizzo, one thing he said about this thing is to leave a legacy, right? So our understanding or unpacking of what a legacy is, is something needs to live on, whether that person is there or not. Mm. Um, Coach Pizzo does talk to uh, the technical team uh, a lot mm. sometimes he, uh, when he's not under pressure. Uh, but he's got, we've got a WhatsApp group that he sends a lot of things to them of what he thinks they must be doing. And he does have sessions with them. Uh, but we're very happy, to be honest, to have Justin in our midst. So just it's possible that uh, on, on, on a day in jail when the league is not wherever he is around the world, you know, my kid will be seeing pizza pitch up. Yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Because that, that's a big draw. Yeah. I think the fathers will be more at the game yeah. that day than uh, <laughs> than the kids themselves. Yeah. Just, just, just uh, as we wrap it up again, please go and visit the website just so you get the right information and you don't get duped. Mm-hmm. You asked us, where do we go if we want our kids to do better? We've given you all the information. It's up to you now to take it on. Ask Moira just again. Where do they go? The website. The website is www.pizomasimanisokaschools.co.za. That's it. We really appreciate you coming. Thank you. Very we can't much wait to host me. here the first pro player oh. that was uh, a part of PMSS or we'll put it in your football calendar. club. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Timmy, twelve years. I don't know if you'll still be here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I'll be old enough to be here. Then uh, we'll host the first one, and I can't wait for it. How old is Junior? Uh, it's only three. My youngest is three. We'll see um, we've soon. got an eight-year-old who still plays uh, and a 12-year-old who plays. The other one said, no, she's not having a ball hit her in the face. <laughs> she needs she needs it to model. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, minus one. I'll give you three. Sounds, Sounds like a good plan. Enough, yeah? Definitely. Thank you. That's more Justin. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. Take a break. When we come back, it's your voice notes. Hey, is there a double hitter at FMB this weekend? Chiefs and Sundowns. Imagine that. There was a story that was floating around. Um, I spoke to Sundowns and they said, no, man, there's no such. Uh, we spoke to Stadium Management, Bert is there. He's a CEO, of course, uh, who looks after it. And that's what he said. Good evening, Andile, to you and your listeners. Um, thank you for the opportunity to uh, clarify the the media reports related to Mamaladi Sundowns hosting the upcoming CAF fixture on the 2nd of March at the FMB Stadium. As a Stadium Management South Africa, we support... Um, a football, and we will always try and assist um, South African clubs with venue availability and hosting of um, fixtures at the venues we manage. In this instance, we were approached by the management of uh, Mamelodi Sundowns on the possibility to host the upcoming CAF fixture on the 2nd of March at the FMB uh, Stadium. I must say that we have a, a very good working relationship with uh, Mamaladi Sundowns and the management, and we try, really try to find um, a way uh, to assist them with this request. Unfortunately, guys, the Chiefs um, are playing uh, a PSL fixture on the 2nd of March and uh, another fixture on the 5th of March, and as you know, Orlando Pilots will host the upcoming Soweto Derby on the 9th of March. Due to the congestion of these upcoming fixtures, um, there's unfortunately no way that we can assist with this request and it was communicated to the uh, management of Mamaladi Sundowns um, during the course of last week. Uh, Since then, we had no further communication uh, uh, from uh, Sundowns or their management. There were no requests related to a venue commission letter. No ESSPC meetings were convened. So I find um, the reports uh, very strange. So um, to clarify the position, I can confirm that as we speak, 
there is definitely not a, a double header or any fixture of Mamalodi Sundowns um, confirmed for the FMB Stadium um, in on Saturday or in the upcoming week. Um, I, I really trust that this will clarify uh, the position. We've got to get out of here. Catch me this evening on Sport at 10. Uh, it's going to be an interesting uh, uh, show, one that I'm going to thoroughly enjoy, and I know you will too. From all of us here today, a uh, special one to a tech imaging guru, Tabongkwala, Olapara Joe, Pella Pella, and all me.